bienvenidos to one of the most beautiful and wonderful cities in Mexico, the crown of Mexico, Guanajuato. Many of you have heard of popular cities in Mexico like San Miguel de Allende, Puerto Vallarta, Cancun, and the like, but only a few have ever been to or heard of Guanajuato. And I want to share with you why you'll love everything about this beautiful town. With its lower cost of living, its colonial charm, its beautiful weather, and everything it has to offer, right in the heart of Mexico. We will go over some of the history, weather, lifestyle, attractions, some common monthly expenses, neighborhoods, and so much more. So if you're considering moving to Mexico and living a real Mexican experience, don't go anywhere because Guanajuato is a top choice for you. So let's get started. Now located in the central area of Mexico, this region is called El Bajío Mexicano. Guanajuato is the capital city of the state of Guanajuato. This city sits at 6,600 feet above sea level with surrounding hills even higher. Its climate is really temperate. The state of Guanajuato is known as the cradle of Mexican independence since the independence war started here in a town called Dolores Hidalgo. With the call to arms against the Spaniard crown from priest Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla on the 16th of September of 1810. Its name is taken from the local indigenous group that translates to the rocky place with frogs or the place of mountains with frogs. Now you may be wondering what I mean when I say a real Mexican experience. To me, this means Guanajuato is a city that is really proud and deep rooted to its Mexican heritage and culture. As soon as you step into the historic downtown, you will feel like you're traveling back in time. The streets here are built with cobblestones and it's filled with old colonial buildings from big temples to houses on the side of the street. This is a very relaxed, easygoing city. And we must say that the people from Guanajuato, or Guanajuatenses, which is obviously a mouthful, make themselves well known across Mexico as one of the kindest and most smiley people in the country. Despite being the capital city of the state and having a population of 200,000 people, you will notice that it actually resembles more of a small town than a big city. Guanajuato is not that heavily populated, so there's a sense of community here. Everybody seems to know each other and everyone is always willing to help you with whatever you need. The city is perfect for people of all ages, from retirees to young couples or students. Now my only word of caution is that because of its beautiful old world charm, cobblestone streets and hills, this may not be the city for you if you have mobility problems and can't walk too much on uneven streets. Because Guanajuato has a huge university population, there are a lot of cultural events and regular things going on. Whether you're looking to retire in a laid back town, a place with great nightlife, lots of activities for young people and everything in between, or you're looking for an artistic and cultural haven, Guanajuato is one of the best choices you can make. So let's get started and let me explain why. But first, let's start with language. Guanajuato doesn't have a huge population that is fully bilingual. The expat community is growing here, so it's not hard to find Americans or Canadians, as well as Asians and other foreigners. However, most of the foreigners moving to Guanajuato probably know some Spanish beforehand since, like I said, this town is as Mexican as it gets, so most of the people or the locals here speak Spanish. But don't get discouraged. A little Spanish every day and a big smile can get you very far in Mexico. The key is to never stop learning a little Espanol. Now let's get a bit deeper into the city and check out some of the neighborhoods we recommend for you to live. Before we get started, I want to take a minute and thank our amazing recommended realtors in Guanajuato. They showed us around, taught us so much about Guanajuato, and gave us a good overview of the following neighborhood so we could share it with you. Now, if you'd like to work with our recommended realtors in Guanajuato to find the best rental for you, check out our complete Mexico relocation guide. The link is in the comments. Now let's start with the central part of the city. Almost all residential neighborhoods, retailers, and overall activities concentrate in downtown or El Centro as we call it in Mexico. You will notice that almost all the roads are connected somehow and pretty much all of them take you downtown one way or another. And there are several neighborhoods in this area, such as Bastita, Hacienda, Zaragoza, and more. But to make it simpler for everyone, we're going to include all of these as part of El Centro. 
The norm in Guanajuato are old independent houses on the sidewalk. Houses in the central area are beautiful and most of them have a lot of history. You can find all types of houses and residents here. It's not like a neighborhood is mainly occupied by upper or middle class or by a specific ethnicity. Now the good thing about living in the central area is that everything will be within walking distance. In El Centro, you can find everything from houses, apartments, studios, or even lofts for singles. Some of the properties in the area that were too big for couples or even families were remodeled and then divided into apartments. And a lot of them, if not most of them, have a really nice terrace or a big communal patio. Overall, Guanajuato is actually very affordable to live in. For example, in Centro, you can find a two bedroom, two bath house ranging from 9,000 to 14,000 pesos a month, which is roughly 450 to 700 US dollars a month, and that includes basic utilities. Take into consideration that if you choose to live in Centro, there are pros and cons. The pros are affordable rental prices, everything is within walking distance and nearby, and you don't need a car to live in this area. But do keep in mind that it's one of the busiest areas in the city and Guanajuato has been growing on tourism and nightlife. So if you're looking for a quiet neighborhood that doesn't have a lot of fireworks, doesn't have a lot of noise after 10 p.m., then maybe El Centro is not your best choice. Which is why I want to introduce you to another neighborhood known as Panoramica. Living here means you get beautiful views of Guanajuato, which Hence its name because you get panoramic views of Guanajuato. The neighborhood is sitting on one of the hills of the inner city, so basically you're circling the central area. But that doesn't mean you're on the outskirts of the town. In fact, you're only about 10 minutes walking from Centro or downtown. This colonia or neighborhood is really easygoing and in comparison with downtown is way quieter and more relaxed. In fact, a number of expats and retirees are choosing this neighborhood because of its proximity to downtown without the noise and because of the really spectacular views that the neighborhood provides. Now, prices range a lot. You can find studios starting from 5,000 pesos a month, which is roughly 250 US dollars a month, to really big houses with three or more bedrooms, a terrace that are fully furnished for over 20,000 pesos a month, or roughly 1,000 US dollars a month. Some of the larger rentals here actually include weekly cleaning of the house without any additional cost to you. So it just depends on the lease that you sign. Another really good neighborhood in Guanajuato would be Paseo de la Presa, or just La Presa as it's locally known. It gets its name because the proximity to one of the many dams in the city is called Presa de la Olla. Now this neighborhood is considered a bit more exclusive in Guanajuato's terms. You'll find a variety of bars, hotels, nightclubs, and just like the rest of Guanajuato, you can find a range of rental options. You'll find slightly more expensive rental here, so, but this also means way bigger properties with more space. You'll see very large homes here, almost as big as an hacienda, and rental prices can be seen in the 30,000 pesos a month or more. That's not really the norm here. The average for this particular area is actually closer to 10,000 to 15,000 pesos a month, which is about 500 to 750 US dollars a month. Way more affordable. So as you can see, it's really affordable to rent a house in Guanajuato. And the process to do this is actually quite simple. Because there's a surge of foreigners coming, landlords are getting used to this and making the process simpler. And you have a lot of neighborhoods and areas to choose from. It really doesn't matter which one you choose, since the average rental rates are pretty much the same for any part of the city. It just depends on who you work with, where you look, what type of house you're looking to rent, and what amenities are included. But one big bonus of living in Guanajuato is you won't have to worry about expensive electricity bills since air conditioning is not needed when you live here. And since we're on the subject of saving money on utilities, let's get into some of the more common monthly expenses from living in Guanajuato, starting with water. Guanajuato actually has a lot of water resources, mostly made by rivers and dams. So living here means your water availability is almost guaranteed. There aren't any shortages in Guanajuato, and the costs are actually very reasonable. The government is in charge of providing water to the different municipalities. Now you can expect a monthly bill of about 100 to 200 pesos. 
Now you've probably heard me talk about the Federal Commission of Electricity in Mexico, or known as the CFE, which subsidizes part of the electric consumption in Mexico and makes it affordable for you, especially in areas like Guanajuato, where the weather is temperate year-round and air conditioning or heating is not needed. You get a bill every two months in Mexico, and you can expect your bill to be about 500 to 800 pesos every two months, or about 250 to 400 pesos monthly. That's about $20 a month. In Guanajuato, there are several companies providing natural gas. The biggest one would be Gas Nieto. One thing to be aware of is how much you consume. The dynamics of getting gas for your house here is pretty much the standard in most of Mexico. You have to call the company, someone will come show up with a new gas tank, or ready to refill your stationary tank. So that's why I say you have to be aware, because without previous notice, you can easily run out of gas, and then you have to wait for the guy to come with a new tank. One tank of gas should be enough for two to three months, depending on how much you cook or how much you use your water heater. But to give you an example, the cost for a 30 liter tank costs around 700 to 800 pesos, and that should be enough for a two month period. But what about internet? Well, if you didn't know this, Guanajuato is actually a top choice for digital nomads nowadays because it does bring good service for you to work. And if you have a terrace, which most houses do, you can actually work while you're enjoying a beautiful site. You can get packages for internet, including phone, service starting from 300 pesos, but these are very basic packages. To get a decent package with at least one gigabyte of speed, you can expect to pay around 1500 to 1800 pesos a month. Now real quick, I know that researching and moving to Mexico isn't a super easy task, and you may be wondering if living in Mexico is even right for you. That's why I created a simple Living in Mexico email series, and it's free to you. So check out our free Living in Mexico email series where I include some of my top tips on the cost of living, residency visas, how to find the best rentals, healthcare costs in Mexico, popular cities to live in, and so much more. That way you get started with the research and some great information. The link is in the comment section of this video. By now, you must already be picturing how your life in Guanajuato could be. Let's get into some of the topics of groceries and household goods like cleaning products or personal care. The majority of markets, grocery stores, and shopping centers are concentrated in the central parts of the city but you can still find a lot of shopping options in the outskirts of the city. Wherever you live in Guanajuato, there will always be either a big box store or a small store nearby where you can get fruits, vegetables, dairies, and sometimes meat. For bigger shopping trips, you can find the big box supermarkets like Soriana, Chedrawi, and La Comer. But most of the locals do their shopping at the local mercados. The main one is Mercado Hidalgo. Here at Mercado Hidalgo, you can find everything you need from fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, spices, personal care products, souvenirs, handcrafted items, organic edibles, healthcare products. I mean, you name it, you can find it all here. This is a big Mexican market with foods from the local farmers and producers. So buying directly from them makes a big impact in your local economy as well as in their pockets. And right in front of Mercado Hidalgo is another market known as Mercado de Gavira, which is filled with all kinds of local foods with authentic Mexican flavors, such as chilaquiles, pambazos, quesadillas, tacos, and Guanajuato's traditional dish, enchiladas mineras. This plate is made up of three or four enchiladas, which are basically tacos filled with potatoes and cheese, with two pieces of chicken on the side, some grilled chile anchos, and more potatoes on the side. Trust me, you just need one plate of this and you'll be so full. And the greatest part is that you won't need to spend more than 150 pesos per person in this market, and you'll leave more than satisfied. Now this market opens every day, but its busiest days are on the weekend. So if you don't like crowds, we recommend for you to go on the weekdays. Also, since everything is more organic, the tendency is to shop small and not really fill your pantry for weeks. In fact, most Mexican households shop every other day. You'll quickly notice this when you see a lot of small refrigerators in most Mexican houses. And if you love markets like I do, there are several other markets scattered across town like La Valenciana, 
where there used to be a mine, so you can find a great variety of precious stones and minerals here. There's a whole market dedicated to this, as well as a lot of street food locals with a lot of traditional Mexican food. All this food is making me hungry, so let's move on to how you will get around. Now, if you love walking and seeing beautiful architecture while you do so, then you'll love Guanajuato. This city is very walkable, and walking here is a cultural norm. Because this used to be a mining city, you'll actually see a lot of alleys and tunnels, and the topography of the place is very irregular. There are hills and steep streets, so when you're walking around, you actually feel like you're walking on a mine. Now officially, the city of Guanajuato has 3,200 alleys. That's a lot, right? And all of them have their own name, their own quirks and history. It's really, really beautiful. Like the infamous Callejón del Beso, or the Kissing Alleyway, which is now internationally recognized as one of the major attractions in the city. This alley is so narrow that if you step out to your balcony, you are close enough to kiss the person in the balcony across you. But what if you live far away and you don't have a car? Well, you can use public transportation. The buses here are well organized and you'll see lots of them all over town. Just know that the wait times can be pretty long. But if you do have a car, I would like to make a point that there is a shortage of parking spaces and you sometimes will find yourself in traffic jams in Centro. A lot of people who own cars end up using them only for road trips or big grocery hauls or going to the airport in Leon. And taxis here are very cheap. They can start at 60 pesos to take you pretty much anywhere in the city, and that's about three US dollars a taxi ride. There's also Uber and Didi, but honestly, the local taxi service is so affordable and so good that it's hard to pass up. Now, even though I have mentioned that Guanajuato is not great for people with mobility issues, there are two sides to that coin. In fact, it's been proven that a lot of people that migrate to Guanajuato have improved in their health conditions simply because they walk a lot more. And this new exercise is a great way for them to build muscle and strength. Now, when it comes to medical centers and hospitals, you'll find that Guanajuato has it all. With routine checkups starting at 50 pesos, without insurance and without an appointment, it's easy to see that Mexico's healthcare accessibility is far better than other countries. If you need some lab work, you can also get some lab tests at Farmacias Similares or Laboratorio El Chopo for only a few hundred pesos without insurance. Now, if you have an emergency or if you need to see a specialist, there are two major hospitals in town. One of them is the General Hospital of Guanajuato and the Medical Center of La Presa. They both offer a diversity of medical services, emergency rooms, they have specialists on staff and surgeons. When shopping for private health insurance, make sure you ask your agent what network of hospitals you have access to. Let's get into the nightlife. Guanajuato is a big college town. So what that means is you'll find a lot of bars, nightclubs, restaurants, all of them with a different offering and different vibe. There's all kinds of places playing music with either a DJ or a live band. And you will see that the streets are busy up until late at night. It's actually not uncommon to meet new people, and make new friends just by walking down the alleys of the city. If you're not into loud music, there are also some really nice wine bars aimed for a more relaxed, romantic date. One of the most iconic experiences in the city is the famous Calle Conadas, which is a night walking tour around the historic downtown. The tour is given by a group of young performers and city guides called La Estudiantina, and is a tradition of Guanajuato that's been going on for decades. So nightlife here is awesome. It doesn't matter how big or small your budget, you can always find something in your price range that's unique and fun. Now, what if you're not really into the nightlife? What other things are there to do? Well, if you didn't know this, Guanajuato is actually declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's truly a beautiful town with so much magic going on, so much history, and it has so much culture. There are a number of museums, like the Museum of Quixote, which exposes paintings and sculptures dedicated to the character created by Miguel de Cervantes, the famous author of Don Quixote de la Mancha. The artist community of Guanajuato is actually really solid and it's growing. Guanajuato is a city that saw the famous muralist Diego Rivera born, and you can find his house here, which is now a museum dedicated to his early paintings. There are also several theaters like 
Teatro Juarez, which is a beautiful building that offers plays year-round, as well as smaller theaters run by smaller companies that offer all kinds of plays. And last but not least, one of the most important and most popular festivals in all of Mexico or in the world is Festival Cervantino which is held every year in this city. It's a cultural festival that takes place in the month of October and is regarded as one of the most important festivals of scenic arts, not only in Mexico, but in the world. It brings a great number of artists and performers from all over the world. Now for nature lovers, this is also a great place to live. As you can see, you're surrounded by a great number of mountains and hills, which make for great hiking, like El Cerro de la Bufa where you can see hikers every day or people walking their dogs. This place has breathtaking views and is a great getaway from the city noise. But probably one of the most important things that you're wondering if you're researching a move to Mexico is safety. Now, I think it's worth mentioning this. If you are serious about moving to Guanajuato and been doing your research, you've probably seen some recent news about the growing violence in the state. And that might bring some concerns at the time of making your decision. So the reason I want to mention all this is to break the stereotype and give you some peace of mind so you take a well-informed decision and won't let the fear-mongering media make your decision for you. It is true that there have been some gang-related violence in the state and it's a topic for headlines in the news. However, most of these events are happening in very secluded areas of the state, in small towns that you can consider pretty much villages. When it comes to cities or towns like Guanajuato or San Miguel de Allende, you don't have anything to worry about. The overall security of the city of Guanajuato is very good. There's always police officers patrolling the area and making sure that no one is disturbing the peace. Also, since there's a sense of community and everyone seems to know each other, the crime rates are pretty low because people look out for each other here. It's not uncommon to see people walking around late at night, so don't let the news and exaggerated headlines influence your decision. Guanajuato is a perfectly safe town. With that being said, we do advise you to take precautions if you are going to take up exploring the state and some smaller villages. So what do you think of Guanajuato? It is truly an exceptional place with so much to offer. If you are ready to move to Mexico and live the real Mexican experience, we think Guanajuato is gonna be one of the best choices you can make. I mean, you have beautiful landmarks, great views, lots of history and culture, a growing artistic community, really beautiful hiking, great outdoors, a much lower cost of living, great food, and you know, just a beautiful place to live in. So I would love to know your comments. What do you think about Guanajuato? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and other of Mexico Relocation Guides videos. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments down below. My name is Mariana and I will see you in the next video. Hasta luego.